everyone. Welcome again to CCW TV, the Comic Culture Warrior video channel. I'm Elliot Serrano, and this is Jose Melendez coming to you from Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois. We're joined today by a special guest. Many of you remember him from last season. Uh, you sat in with us uh, way back in the w days of Wednesday Comics. Remember? Yes, indeed. Wednesday so Comics. he's making his annual appearance. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jose's friend. I'm sorry. You like just going by Avi, right? Just the Avi? Avi's fine. Yeah. But about, um, it's your full name, of course, is Avi Bastarmajan, right? Did I say that right? That's closer than, closer than, I than get. most people yep. get. Okay, good. Closer than I get. But anyway, <laughs> um, Avi's joining us today because we're going to have kind of a, we're going to break away from the usual. Uh, whenever Avi's here, you, we like adding another voice uh, to the uh, discussion. We're going to be talking uh, mostly today about the big thing that hit te interwebs which was the um, issue of swiping and more specifically um, what happened recently with the incarnate book from Radical Comics created by Nick Simmons, son of uh, rock star and entrepreneur Gene Simmons. So that, that's been the thing that everyone's been you know talking about and you guys have asked us to talk about it. And um, Avi wanted in on this conversation because um, he's you're an artist yourself. Yeah. You have, you have your own DeviantArt page. I think the last time you were on the show, we actually put up a link to your DeviantArt page. A whole bunch of uh, the CCW TV viewers checked it out. Got a lot of, you know, uh, got a lot of compliments. Folks that like your stuff. Not one new piece on there. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> no? I work, oh. for, I work for a living. I draw, but I don't really, I mean... It's a fun little thing that I put it up once, and I, I check out other people's art more than I, you know, put my own up there. But, uh, but yeah, I thought it would be, you know, I think I didn't know about the situation in all honesty. I usually try to keep up with the comic book news, but uh, uh, Jose called me about it today and told me about it, and I thought it would be an interesting thing to talk about and yeah, maybe I kinda, give like an art, art perspective. Exactly. I, well, I called him specifically because um, because he is an artist, and to have a writer and somebody who neither writes or really draws at all having a conversation talking about art uh, I don't know I don't think it'd be a lot of, have a lot of credibility <laughs> so to have an actual artist sit in with us so we can discuss this uh, uh, to go a little bit uh, yeah because well, yeah. credibility really is an issue yeah, right it here. is it is trust <laughs> me yeah. I, I forgot my, my beret so I, got that. <laughs> I meant to bring that but, wait uh, a but you know what it is though remember now uh, we had also talked about this uh, last season too Obama being elected, we should be a socialist country now. We're supposed to be able to hang out on corners, you know, painting. That's right. Having croissants and, and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I want my socialist lifestyle. See, I was going I more for the, uh, you know, communist thing. Communist? You know, bread lines, uh, ah, paper yeah. lines. There you go. Hot Russian, Russian brides. <laughs> Mail order brides. <laughs> Mail order brides. Same thing. Okay, so for those who aren't familiar with what we're talking about, we're just touching on it, but uh, very recently it got out on the on the internet that um, Nick Simmons, again, creator of Incarnate, has some uh, imagery in this book first highly touted. You know, we're talking this thing got pushed everywhere. Pushed at Comic Con San Diego. Uh, you can find it on. He, he, they actually uh, pushed it on the TV show. The, the TV show Family Jewels. Jewels. If you yeah. go to the Family Jewels website, mm -hmm. the, is that that's VH1, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, it's, is it? I think it's, if you just go to Family Jewels, you probably get a totally different website. Yeah, you're gonna get a different one. That's true. <laughs> but if you go to the website for the show, they have you can buy the book. Oh, it was off a &E, of there. I could be wrong. A &E. You're right. It could be A and E. Um, in in. And, but anyway, so this book got really pushed, and of course, because Nick Simmons is the son of Gene Simmons, and Gene Simmons, many folks know as um, the demon on, um, on the uh, rock band Kiss, but also, you know, again, we said an entrepreneur, um, has several businesses, made a lot of money, he had, um, uh, he did a stint on the Donald Trump show, The uh, Celebrity Apprentice, and I think did really well, showed that he has some very sound uh, business sense, very, yeah, very business kind of acumen, very strong, very yeah. strong business acumen. Didn't seem to translate to the kid though, because what happened was, um, it when f first I'll backtrack just a bit. When Jose first told me about this, um, Jose, for the record, actually spotted these things in Incarnate a while back when the, when the book shit right. Yes, yeah. so when it first is, came out. Yeah, so this is a story, and 
this is gonna there's gonna be a lot of tangents we're gonna take here because there's a lot of stuff to discuss. So this is probably gonna take up all of the segments this week. Um, so when this book first shipped, um, I put out the com- new comics every every week, and uh, and the reason that I checked it out initially is because Joe Chen does does the covers, and I like Joe Chen, so I'm like, oh, what's this about? Uh, I'm not really familiar with Nick Simmons. Like, I'm not familiar with the show. I am familiar with the show. I know what the show is, but I never watched it, so I didn't know he actually did a comic. I didn't know that, that there was a big uh, hubbub to be made about this comic. And I'm looking through it, and I'm like, boy, man, this guy really likes Bleach. And that was the first thing that I, I noticed. That the, the, and then there's some... And on top of that, some of the imagery also reminds me of Helsing, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alucard from Helsing. And that's just because I actually read manga. I actually right. read the first 12, ish, or 12 volumes of Bleach, and I've read uh, well, you've and watched... have always been big into manga. And, and, and yeah. I've always been... In, yeah, and this is going to draw... Or this is going to lead us into a, a, a different tangent later on. But So I'm looking through this, and I'm like, okay, so this guy really likes Bleach. Uh, like I said, I only read the first 12 volumes. Looking through it, I didn't know that he actually swiped actual panels in imagery i just said oh this guy really likes bleach really likes Halcyon, scene must be an anime so at that point i really didn't think that he was swiping but the reason i didn't really bring it up at all is because this has been going on forever mm-hmm. uh back in the 90s when i was like really big into anime and manga. actually i got into anime and manga before i actually got into american comics um so when stuff started happening around the 90s where you would you would see when Battle Chasers came out or Danger Girl uh, Rob, and some stuff that Rob Liefeld did in Captain America, uh, there was always stuff that I noticed in there uh, that were swipes from like uh, Masu, uh, Masumune Shiro, uh, uh, Kenichi, yeah, <laughs> Kenichi Sonoda from Bubblegum Crisis. A lot of people using their either Max designs or you know their, <clears throat> their their guns or just straight out just character swipes. Right. And so when I was thinking, I was like, oh, this is nothing new. Americans have been stealing from, from, from Japanese art as well as other art, but I'm talking about manga specifically. So I, it wasn't a big deal to me. I'm like, it's, it's just something that has been done and I've grown accustomed to. But, of course, now you're talking about in the 90s. Right. And when Before the internet. Before the internet and before, um, before manga... Really, I mean, look at the manga community now as opposed to back then. Right. It's especially in the United States, it's way more integrated now because of the internet, and you can have more communication and uh, about this sort of thing going on. Right. The, the, for for me to talk about people back then when I saw this stuff, I would you know hang out with Avi and Randy, and I'd actually have art books and the mm-hmm. comics that I bought. And I'm like, oh, look at this, you know. The, mm-hmm. So I was able, but you know, it's a very small select group that I actually knew. Right. Who were in the comics? Who actually and actually had some of the manga and anime that they took stuff from? And like, oh yeah, you know. But yeah, there was no internet back then, so it wasn't as widespread. And uh, then when the internet did start up, there was an actual. Uh, I don't think it's around anymore, but there was a website Avi had mentioned earlier that uh, I remember going to was called the Swipe File. Right. Now, you know, I'm not sure if it was its own or maybe just maybe like a, a feature on another website. I know. But, I know Rich Johnson right. started it back right. in his old uh, um, lying in the gutters. <clears throat> Uh, he but would I think do it, it every once in a while. It predates but... that, though. Oh, really? Uh, and I think they use Swipe File uh, as the. Uh, so I know Brian Stelfreeze. Th- Brian Stelfreeze, I think, wasn't in Robert DeJesus, uh would, would post stuff on there, I think. I know Robert DeJesus yeah. did. Things uh, that they found, uh, you mean? Or? Yeah, things that they not found. Not their work. Right, right not their work, yeah. but, but stuff that they found that right. they pointed out. And to be fair, when we're talking about swiping, I mean, you're, you're specifically talking about from anime or from manga, but swiping is something that has been involved in comics since, you know, I mean, Bob Kane's original Batman drawings were all swiped off of things that were done by uh, uh, Alex Raymond and things like that. So right. swiping has got a rich, rich history in comics. It's, it's an integral part of comics. I want to say I, I, I want to say I agree with you up to a point. And maybe it's just me being... I'm not saying of, in a good way. I'm just saying it's got a history. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and okay, in that context, that's true. Because, yes, yeah, swiping has been around for a long time. And when you look at folks like, you know, like you said, um, uh, Gil Kane... Um, Alex Raymond, uh, Jack Kirby, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing, you know, has happened for a long time. But we're looking at artists in, in that time who had to crank out like four or five books in a month mm-hmm. and had these hideous deadlines just constantly on them. And there will be times where it's like, okay, you need to get a panel done. H- how am I going to get this done? Okay, uh, well, I'm going to borrow this over here and, and but the fit artists it in. That you mentioned, I don't think, are known for swiping. Uh, you just mentioned Jack Kirby, Alex Raymond. And... They've been swiped from. Right. They've been yes. swiped from. Almost definitely. Right. Yeah. 
Well, you were telling me, were you, uh, you told me a story earlier today about, was it Sal Buscema? Yeah, I mean, Sal Buscema had a, a pretty uh, famous lecture that he gave uh, with for the young artists, you know, coming into the Marvel bullpen, basically telling them how to uh, crank out pages by swiping, um, you know, styles and poses from other people. And again, this is coming from a guy who could draw, he's probably one of the best draftsmen in comics. Right, So, right. I mean, no, the but, I want to go and let me, to, to, to kind of like finish my point though. With something like that though, it's one thing if you're an artist who's in the bullpen and you got you know again back in the day when you had like three four books. I mean, Nick Nick Simmons didn't have uh, this deadline placed on him. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. It wasn't like he was being told by a publisher, "You need to get this in on time. We got a deadline to hit." Whether this or not is, he was, it wouldn't. I wouldn't think it would absolve him if he had a deadline crunch. I don't think it's no. Nah, well, I mean, but you can not uh, maybe not absolve, but I can probably sympathize a little more. Right. But the fact that this is really kind of like a vanity thing for him. It's him trying mm-hmm. to make him a name for himself in comics and. Mm-hmm. And this thing is pushed like a new vision in comics and blase, blase. Mm-hmm. You look at this, people who read this, like you do, like you say, you read it, do you see anything terribly new in here? No. No, actually, uh, I, tr- oh man, I read the first issue uh, and I got halfway through the second, I had to stop. I mean, the writing is, and again, this is where opinions start coming in, this is my opinion. The well, writing to is- be fair, we've probably said this before going any further. This is all of our opinion. We're not... Well, I mean, right. People who watch right. this right. know this is all opinion. No, what I'm saying is that, opinion. you know, yeah. we live in America. He's innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. My opinion is that this is a case of swiping, but again, that's just my opinion. You can't sue me for that. <laughs> sue me for my opinion. So, so. Uh, yeah, so I read I, this, and, and, and the first thing that came to my mind is, because uh, actually, all right, so I told a story where I first noticed this a couple of months ago about the bleach thing. And then this thing came up, I'm like, well, I'm going to read it today before we before we actually talk about it, because I actually want to get aggressive with the story and see what's really going on. So I'm reading this, and I'm like, the story is already Helsing. It's it's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a a, 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 a rich, wealthy family, uh, a conglomerate, like, corporation that has the money and has the means to hunt monsters. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what this is. And uh, this, this char- main character, Mott, is kind of a mishmash of... Of one of the characters from Death Note and um, and uh, Alucard from Helsing, mm-hmm. who's a vampire in Helsing, mm-hmm. and so, but I'm reading this and it's, it's just there's nothing new like it's, it's such a bear to get through. The dialogue is pretty terrible. The story is unoriginal, and it's just funny because I, I, uh, I mean, it's people that hunt monsters. That's incredibly original. I know it is. <laughs> it is. Wow. But. Uh, it, uh, but I mean, this seems derivative to me. It's very but derivative. But everything, this, the, you're I saying, understand that. Everything but, but is when, pretty but derivative. When the, yeah. But when, but when, but when the, uh, the designs of certain characters or certain things that you see remind me of Helsing, it's probably best not to use the story of Helsing in the uh, comic that you're swiping yeah. from you're because sw- it's not only you swiping the art, but you're pretty much the basic outline of the story. If you're gonna swipe a picture of Batman, you probably shouldn't do it. You know, in a or bat- a picture of Batman. Yeah. yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Exactly. Murphy, I can do a Batman-type character. Right. And, and, and just and like, you know, exactly. like when, when David Max swiped a Daredevil from Alex the Moody. Dare- yeah, yeah I remember put it that. In the Daredevil comic. Yeah. That was really smart. Uh, but well, I, I, that actually seemed more appropriate to me. <laughs> swipe Daredevil to use in Daredevil. Well, when, but when people do swipes uh, in the past, what you'll do is, you know, you're going to draw a picture of Daredevil, you would go back and do a swipe of, you know, Nightwing or something like right, that. Right, you know, so right, right. So at least there's a little bit of layer of separation. Not again, swiping to me, not something that I would approve of. But I'm just saying it, it's done a lot. Not to be confused with um, you mentioned the other day. Uh, what's his name? Um, Greg, Greg Land. Greg Land. Greg Land. Which I think a lot and a lot of the things that I read this this uh, this afternoon about this, a lot of people would bring up Greg Land's name. Not really swiping, more <coughs> of just I mean using uh, kind of tiresome photography to base his art on. It's not the same as swiping actual line art that someone else has drawn. Right. No, Greg Land, what I, I call his stuff more like compositing. He, he does yeah, a, he, a composition of yeah. something it's a, it's a, yeah, using it's like photography. A, um, uh, or um, like, um, like a decoupage. Uh, Tim Bradstreet mm-hmm. does. That's also yeah. what he does. He does a lot of photography. To, to be fair, Tim, Tim Bradstreet, he adds a lot more uh, he, of himself in it. He takes the photos himself. He has No, I'm just saying. Right. He right. does. Right. He will See, say... In, in, he he sets up the lighting and everything. Well, I'm saying, great, we have yeah. talked about this before. People yeah. who like Tony Harris and and like Tim Bresci, who right. take the photos themselves right. and make the art their own. Right. Whereas uh, Greg Land uses photos or stuff from porn, or he'll go like on Getty Images, like right, uh, right. in the image database, and just take those pictures off of there. They had nothing to do with it and use them in his composition. But there, there is some talent taking a value photography, uh, you know, which is values of light, and making that into a line item. 
mm-hmm. a, a, a line uh, a line drawing. There's a, a, there's a there's a bit of artistry there. Um, taking a line drawing and then either copying it wholesale by using a, a light box or a tracing paper or even just you know drawing it side by side with your your drawing. There, there's a lot less uh, artistry there. It's basically just so. So he, let me ask you this question since mm-hmm. you're since you're here. So. Do you think it's okay for Marvel to have someone like Greg Land on the payroll who is drawing one of their top ten books every month? Does it does it any in any way demean the in the, the medium or the industry by having somebody who does that who's not really a cartoonist? See, though, that, that's getting a, paid for that does it mean does that make it more acceptable in comics because he's doing a, it? That's an interesting notion. I mean, basically, if you're looking at, at cartooning. Uh, most artists, you know, Dave, you have artists like Dave Stevens, God Rest His Soul, uh, Neil Adams. I mean, they would use photos uh, to to help make their work more realistic. The difference is they would they would also were very uh, good draftsmen if they just sat down and just just cartoon something. You know, I, I think what a lot of people, especially in comics, they look at anyone who uses any type of photo reference as uh, you know swiping or copying, and that's really not true. If you look at illustration, if you look at your you know your average uh, uh, artist who, who's a, maybe a drawing instructor. They would laugh at, at the notion of, of referencing a model or a photo in a drawing that that's completely legitimate. Actually, they'll, they'll kind of turn their nose up on cartooning because cartooning is not actually drawing; it's it's cartooning. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, to me, I, I think it's it's nice that if you you know if you're an artist, you want to use references. That's great, but at the same time, you know, try not to to use references that are in the public eye and, and become like you said, like a like a uh, just a. Uh, like a decoupage of other people's photos, especially when they're not even appropriate. I mean, when you when you look at some of the Greg Land stuff, and you, you can tell it's a lady about to go down on a guy, but it's really giving a sonic scream or something like that. It seems kind of an odd, yeah. an odd choice. <laughs> That's what he gives a new term to sonic yeah. scream. <laughs> All right, we're running out of time for this segment, so what we're going to do is uh, real quick, uh, one, two, three, incarnate from what you've seen. Is Nick Simmons uh, swiping or just pl- pl- flat out plagiarizing? In your opinion, same thing. Mm, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, swi- well, why don't we? Why don't we just pick well, it up in the next segment? Unless you want to end this on. I want to end this on that uh, because I've seen I've seen the overlays. I mean, it looks like he's just flat out tracing. I mean, and to me, right. there's a difference between swiping and tracing. And to me, there's a difference between swipes and plagiarism. Right. I mean, swiping is using somebody else's panel as a as a um, a reference, mm-hmm. and, but I mean, this stuff looks flat out traced. Right. So it's the same thing. Swiping and tracing are the same thing. Really? Well, because basically, with, with swiping, you're using someone else's art. Whether or not you have the uh, but the, the way the you limited... the way you the way you reproduce it. No, no, no. Like, let's say, for example, you're looking at someone else's line art, someone else's comic book artwork, right? Mm-hmm. And you're using that. And you have the ability to just go ahead and draw it from that image. Yeah. Or you can trace it, or you can mm-hmm. lightbox it, whatever. You, you know, if you if you don't need the lightbox, if you can basically just look at it and draw from it, right. it's still just as bad. I mean, you may you may get some points for being able to, you know, have the muscle control to like draw something and have the the visual or you know the hand eye coordination to be able to draw it. But it's basically the same thing. You're taking someone else's work, uncredited. You're you're <coughs> taking it. You're appropriating it for your own purposes, and you're going ahead and, and using it. Different than what I was saying was what Greg Land does and what other artists do when they use photos. Using a photo and basically drawing from life, quote unquote, is different than just drawing someone else's or already created drawing. Because you're not you're not drawing from life; you're drawing from someone else's work. And you can make the assertion that you know someone's photography is their work as well, mm-hmm. and, and that there's, there's obviously uh, been some contention about that, especially because the internet's kind of like a big, huge scrap file of, of places you can get photos from. But <coughs> um, but I mean, what I'm seeing is swiping is basically using someone else's artwork. Draw. I'm talking about drawing a comic book artwork in this case. Um, to make comic book artwork without crediting that person, which is basically, from what I can see on this book, in my opinion, that's what he's that's what he's done, and um, you know, which is it just to me, it's reprehensible. But okay, we'll jump back into this in the next segment, and when we come back, we'll also discuss even more how the internet has affected <coughs> the community of manga readers. We hope you join us. <laughs> 